we're closing this now, um, that they were frustrated, which I understand very much. And I mean, so they think that, you know, um, we're going to be living as scavengers of whatever hardware platforms others have and try to find the one that we can somehow make use of still. And we're going to, you know, somehow try to work around the biggest problems. There's attempts to somehow, you know, get, um, like, you know, the management engine ripped out or, you know, flash it with something that, you know, makes it um, actually no longer functional. There's attempts to somehow, you know, find ways to make that hardware support what we need. Um, and guys from Raptor Engineering are understandably, I think, frustrated about that when we have such a better choice, plus it's not where they think we should be going. Um, and I agree, because I don't want to be a second-class citizen in a forgive me, but this one is, I cannot leave, in a US culture-dominated world. Um, I don't think second-class citizen is very good status to have in that kind of world. Um, I think we want an actual world where we can get to build things that are ahead of the state of the art, that also reflects our value. In other words, I mean, usually CEOs tell their staff, don't build stargates. Um, in this case, I think we should build one. I think we should aim high. I, I do believe that we, as a community, should understand that there is currently a turning point. Open power can succeed, and it does so in some fields. High performance computing, scientific computing, it's actually very successful there. It can still drift off in areas that are useless to us. It can still fail, of course, although by this point in time, the critical mass seems to be there. But the point is, will it be our ally? Will it be our platform of the future? And that is something that we get to determine, right? I, I believe that as of right now, open power is our last best hope for an actual strong hardware platform that we can determine, that we can influence, that we can shape and build and disassemble and rebuild and keep doing the things with that we want to do. So here's what I want you to do. All right, I did this with a different font, now this broke. Um, doesn't matter. So I want you to get involved in the whole open power thing. I want you to think about that platform when you build your software. In fact, I want you to play with that platform, with your software. There's actual programs from IBM, which is currently producing um, the chips en masse, um, that you can actually get access to hardware for free software projects at much, much better conditions. Um, if you're interested in that, I, I will gladly hook you up with the right people and make sure that somehow we get your boxes. Because I think we should get involved in this. I do want you to help spread the word. I mean, most in our community that I have spoken to for the past year about this had never heard of this, had never thought about this, had, had never actually come across this before. Um, they didn't even know it existed. For some reason, when IBM tries to communicate something, it ends up being a really well-kept secret. They are horrible at communication. Um, we need to grab this and make it ours. In fact, that's what we started doing. I mean, we did an event series with IBM and Red Hat together last year to show the first actual top to bottom fully open collaboration stack, right? So Colab on top as your, as your security, fully open solution. Red Hat is a platform and underneath power. First time this is possible. We thought it was exciting, but we said, let's tell people about it. And being in Brussels right now, here's something that I've done over the past month now, coming to Brussels regularly. Um, if you're involved in any way, shape, or form in this group, 
be it as, you know, somehow someone who's a staffer or working on IT staff or knowing someone who is. See, here's why I think that the Brussels bubble, as it is also lovingly called, should think about. Um, look at this statement. So, I mean, I, I only took out the parts to make it anonymized. So you would be able to tell immediately where this comes from. This is a statement from a website. Um, so without a joint program of development and production, Europe would be left trailing the wake of the Americans who dominated the industry and looked set to consolidate their supremacy. European firms would become little more than subcontractors to American manufacturers. Hundreds of thousands of jobs could be at risk. The European economy would be dependent on the United States. This is not about the IT industry. I took this off the website of a pretty well-known large company. This one. Airbus was the European reaction to the dominance of the US in the entire air transport industry. It was deemed strategically important enough that we needed to do this and build a platform that we could trust, that we could work with, that be European, that would also protect our ability to innovate and our independence as an economy. Now, airplanes and the entire aerospace industry are undoubtedly extremely vital and important. However, I believe information technology is even more so. Perhaps even by orders of magnitude, because frankly, these guys depend on us now. Whatever is true for them is clearly true for us as well. So I leave what we as a region, and speaking as a European here, should be doing, although I think other regions in the world might want to consider doing the exact same thing. We should get involved in the whole open power story and start building our own. You know, start building our own chips again and have a technology base on which we can actually rely. And if you think that's unrealistic, let me just tell you that's exactly what the Chinese have done. Um, China is now building its own open power chips. They're building the processor. Because it is open design, what they did was they took out the bits that are US crypto that they didn't quite trust and put in their own crypto bits that they did trust. <coughs> and building those chips for themselves. Because it's the only way that they understand they can be sovereign. I believe we should do the same. And so should probably every other major region, I mean, not every country will be likely able to do this. I think regions should get together and do this. Let's take back control at that level too. So this is more or less what I want to leave you with. I think for us as a community, it is time to get to work. Together because that is what we do best. We are a community of technical people that knows how to actually solve very hard problems as a group, collectively, because we know that we can do this as a global community. That is the other part that I think we need to contribute to this, because you see, when you tell European policymakers about this, there's this tendency that they now have this fortress Europe idea where everything must be only European, including like all the designs and everything, right? I don't think that that will ever work. No single company, no single region, no single country will ever have all the smart brains in the world. As a global population of human beings. 
we can solve much better problems. We can solve them in much better ways and for the benefit of all of us. And so I think that is the approach we should be taking to this. Let's work this together as we do for the software. The free software movement is a global movement based on these principles. And let's apply it to hardware. That's what I want to tell you. Thank you. We have a few minutes for questions. <coughs> Thoughts, comments, reactions? Yes. Uh, I think you need the microphone. Can yes, we? Okay. Yes. Is that you? Perfect. On? Yes. Um, I'm interested in your answer from all your experience um, in the following question. Whenever there is uh, a foundation like that, it's open, open, open. There's always a membership attached to that foundation where you have to pay several K uh, US dollar to be a member of it and to vote and to build things. So uh, what would be your answer to the question, what's open about this? Well, so um, if you are an individual or an academic institution, the open power membership is actually free. There's no I cost. saw this, but you have a non-voting right. I saw it on the website, so... I don't know what it means really, but okay, you can be an, an academic or an associate, I saw that, but uh, you are, uh, it's a very reduced sort of uh, participation. For example, you can't vote, that's just what I saw from the website. So I was, would just be interested in what's open about this membership thing that all those foundations have going on. Well, I mean, so the point is, um, is voting about things like the bylaws or the membership fees for the industry members the only way you can or want to influence this? I don't necessarily think so. Um, if you are involved in this professionally in some way, which is what most companies are, right, then membership fees are a natural part of, of these associations because they organize events, they have staff, right? they, they have a secretariat, all these kind of things, these expenses need to be paid. So the members themselves pay them. Um, I agree that being able to participate uh, more is always a good thing. Um, what I believe is that at the end, the ability to engage in the design process and provide the input is extremely valuable. Um, and I never said the Open Power Foundation was, as it stands today, perfect. I think it can improve. It's, I think it has to improve. But the way we improve it is by getting involved, is my experience. Well, but you have to pay for it. Okay, don't you think? I'm just... Okay, but when you have 60... Thousand uh, when you have to pay sixty sixty thousand dollar to be to get involved. I was just wondering about that. Okay, thank you. Well, you 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 don't necessarily. We don't pay the sixty thousand. So. Well, it's the silver or whatever. I just bought on the website. So yeah, there's one here. Hi. <clears throat> Um, so I, I run a um, sort of medium-sized internal cloud, couple of thousand cores. Oh, sorry. sorry. I, I run sort of a medium-sized internal cloud, about a couple of thousand cores, and we went to our uh, suppliers, vendors. We have multiple hardware vendors, and asked for open power hardware to test. And turns out that none of them actually advertise that they're selling them, and the ones that do actually sell them, you need to start with some kind of weird pilot program. You cannot just go and buy some. So, so what is your experience with that? So, I don't know when that was. This was like last month. Interesting. Because I, I know that um, they've been trying... Which country was this? Uh, the Netherlands. Okay. Um, get in touch, we'll sort that out. Because, I mean, I know that they're shipping individual boxes um, easily. I mean, I, I know didn't know who... You, spoke to is the problem. I mean... I, I can tell you in person, I don't want to name our vendors. You, yeah. Usually, for instance, Avnet is acting as, as a global distributor for power hardware. 
um, they usually are happy to actually provide boxes through that program as well. We need a microphone. Can you fix my desktop, please? It's using Intel. I want to use Power 8 or 9, and since the Talos workstation failed, uh, is there any possibility for us to get chips for computers, or is it only for cloud computing? Well, so you can get the chips. The problem is you need them. Everything else goes with them, right? Like, you know, the actual motherboard and all that kind of stuff. Um, so, um, Talos was trying to do just that. Um, unfortunately, they didn't succeed. I hope they, will, they or someone else will try again. Um, because I also want that kind of machine as my desktop. Um, it would have been very, very important for us for them to succeed. Uh, they didn't. But um, I don't think we should let that stop us. Hi, thank you for the talk. Uh, when will the x86 patents expire? I mean, surely they must expire at some point in the distant future. Uh, and two, I don't think the Talos project failed. I think the crowdfunding mechanism failed. Because why should there be a time limit on crowdfunding? Why don't we, why don't we just consider it an investment? And then when the uh, funds have reached the designated point that is uh, needed for the project, and it goes off running. It's a stupid thing to have the time limits. I, it's totally arbitrary. I agree. Um, I, I think um, doing it in the way that it was done, including with a time limit, was perhaps not the best way of going about it. Um, for them, of course, it means because it failed, they got absolutely no money out of this. Um, so they, are, I mean, they seem to be... Um, Busting themselves off right now, um, from from what I can see in terms of communication, and kind of try to figure out what to do. I think if we send them a strong message of, can you please, you know, find a way to do this, um, because we want one, um, maybe we can convince them to come back. Do the turtle, not the hare. Slow and steady does. It. Yeah. And uh, what about the patents, the x86 patents? Surely at some distant point in the future we can build our own x86. I mean, I mean in 2,000 years, for, I mean, in a billion years, the patents must expire, right? Sure. Yeah. Or are, do they have, like, magic tricks to maintain the patents forever? Well, well first of all, um, they're usually quite good stacking patents on patents, right? I mean, they don't stop filing for new ones. So um, you will be able to, I, mean, I don't know, you might be able to build 286 at some point. Um, but the question is whether you want to. Um, and so that's, you know, we're, we're looking at games of speed and scale with these things. Um, and that's, I mean, that's something you have to learn the hard way, I guess, sometimes, that scale actually matters a lot. So, uh, hello, thank you for the talk. Uh, and uh, I actually have two questions. First, questions, uh, first question is, well, by which patents and NDA you are bound in case you want to build your own open power implementation? And uh, the second question uh, is more specific. What uh, will you do in order to replace PCI Express, which is heavily bound by uh, a, a, well, a lot of IPs and uh, patents, because, well, uh, PCI Express current industry standards for communicating with uh, peripherals, and uh, there is uh, GIPR transport, but well, GIPR transport is mostly dead, uh, but, well, and there is nothing else which can be used in order to build truly open uh, platform. Okay, I, I, I had problems understanding the full question, but, um, so first of all, the, the patent question. So the way that um, they've set this up is effectively a you get the right to use this all, um, but there is a certain level of non-assertion in the sense of you're not attacking anyone and you're not using them aggressively and, and you know, you're, 
You're essentially saying we play nice with each other, which actually the way it is done reminds me a lot of, of the way that the OIN was set up um, as a way to somehow work around the patent problem to make it, you know, it, I mean, we all know patents are an issue, um, but that's at least a way of trying to live with the problem. Um, so you can, if, if, if you become a member there, you can definitely um, use the technology. Um, if um, you're not one, I'm, I still believe that um, you could get non-assertion guarantees because the interest is not in asserting the patents, the, the interest in actually making technology take off. Um, and there's things like the open copy um, standard and so on, which are building the interface standards that are likewise open. Um, because a lot of the industry, e even the very big players, have gone to understand that the inherent monopoly that follows from certain patents creates issues for them um, that are much worse than the benefits are from holding maybe a patent here or there on certain technologies themselves. Um, IBM has understood that um, if they were to, to try to assert all the patents on the power platform, um, then the platform would be dead. Um, they, they have no way to get people engaged with this. No one would want to su make themselves subject to that kind of um, litigation. So for them, it, it was a clear decision, we want to give this out. To the point that I know some companies have asked even for exclusive rights, regional exclusive rights, on building power chips. And IBM said, sorry, no can do. We don't have those rights anymore. They're in the foundation. So, and the foundation is not going to give this to you. Um, I don't have a question, but I have some answers to the other questions. Um, so for the paid membership, no, there is an exception. As an open source company, you can get free membership, which gives you voting rights. Okay, it's very limited, but you still have voting rights. Um, as for getting um, hardware boxes, um, you can contact Colab or you can contact me. I have actually boxes from IBM which I got to do development and I'm doing development on them. Um, you can actually rebuild everything from the um, beginning from the firmware till the end, whatever you want. Thank you. Thank you. Do we still have a couple of minutes, maybe one question then, but it's actually completely done. Yeah, hello. So um, I assume you do collaborative hardware development also. So my question is, how low level is this hardware development? Because I also work in the hardware industry. And how do you deal with the costs associated with producing this hardware then? Well, I mean, if you, if you design it, you eventually need to build it. There, there's, I mean, if you want to use it anyway. Um, and um, that will involve cost. However, what you will find in an association such as the Open Power Foundation, you will find others who may have an interest in sharing those costs with you if they have an interest in the actual platform. That is what I believe, for instance, Google and Rackspace have done with their joint platform. They've together developed a platform that they both want and so they can share some of the cost. Right? So you can actually come together to solve those issues or try to find one of the other hardware manufacturers in there and work with them to organize actual distribution. How low level is this uh, development? Well, yeah. I, 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 it is as low as you want to go. Um, I mean, it, it starts from the chip, right? Because um. uh, in, inside the chip, there's also a lot of different components, like yeah. just the memory components. So you all, all look at the, even at that level. Yeah, I mean, the Power 9 chip um, changes the way it does its whole core design in the sense of like how, how the different parallel cores are working and, and how they are, um, in fact, set up and configured. Um, they've changed that to be even more um, useful for the use cases that people were running on this in, in their data centers. Um, so Power 9 actually reflects that change. Yeah, uh, hello, quick question. Uh, you, uh, I would like to know how could um, others, uh, Open Power could relate to uh, Open Compute projects and you, have you thought about sharing uh, design uh, with uh, this group? 
I think that's absolutely what should happen. Um, I want all the open hardware projects, the open compute project and so on, I want this to start working together because um, we can design it, but we also need ways to build it, to distribute it, to scale it, to later service it. Um, so we need an ecosystem, we need infrastructure around this. Um, so let's use the one that exists. And I'm out of time. Thank you all.